Okay, in chapter 3, we're going to talk about vectors. And we had already mentioned vectors, and we talked about how you graphically add vectors. Remember, if we have vector A and vector B in some other direction, to add them, you just put tail, the head of this one to the tail of that one, and you just do A plus B, and you go from the tail of the first one to the head of the last one. That's the way to graphically add them, but that doesn't work well in most cases, because most cases you don't have it drawn out precisely. We want to get a mathematical way to do this. And so, what we're going to do in this one is do what we call vector components. And the way to do that, or the way we're going to do it in here, there's multiple ways to do it, is we're going to use an XY system coordinate grid. And remember, we can move vectors wherever we want. So I'm going to move vector A down here so the tail of it is on the origin of our system. So I'm going to put my vector A here. Same vector. Not sure I made it long enough. Same vector. I just moved it to this position right here. And then what we're going to do is I'm going to split it up into components. We're going to have a vector on the x-axis and a vector on the y-axis so that those two added together create the final vector. And the way to do this is just to take components. Essentially we drop a line straight down to the x-axis and drop one over here to the y-axis. And then, let's see what color here, I'll do it in blue. We can have a vector here, we're going to call this AX, because this is vector AX. We're going to call this vector AY. Now we do that so if you add these vectors, they equal vector A. And so you can take any vector, any vector, and split it into components that are X components and Y components. Okay? And you can have a Z component if we're doing three dimensions. We're just going to do it with two dimensions right now. So we have X and Y components of each of them. And how you get that position is we need to know an angle away from some location, some reference point. That angle can be anywhere. So in this case, I'm going to use the angle theta here, which is the angle between the X axis and the vector. That will not always be the case. Now, I know in math classes, you're used to always having the angle, always start from the positive x and always going counterclockwise. Physics, we don't do that. Our angle can be anywhere. You just have to refer to it and tell people where it is so they can find it. All right, so for example here then, let's do a quick review. Because you need to know your trig functions. We use them a lot. And remember, a trig function just says, if I have any right triangle, right triangle, so one angle is a 90 degree angle. If I have my angle theta here, this is the opposite, this is the adjacent side, this is the hypotenuse. And remember, the sine of theta is the opposite over the hypotenuse. Cosine of theta is the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And the tangent of theta is equal to the opposite over the adjacent, or the sine over the cosine. Those are the basic definitions of trig functions. But we're going to use all those all the time. So in this case, if I want to figure out what AX is, right, this, this vector down here, I know A and I know theta, then since this is the adjacent side, right, this is my triangle, the right angles right here, so it's set up exactly like this one. I'm going to use cosine. So I'm going to say, oh, the cosine of theta is equal to AX, the adjacent, over the hypotenuse, which is just A. Or the way we usually write this is that AX, I'm going to do this over here, is equal to A cosine theta, where A is the hypotenuse, the magnitude of the hypotenuse. And the same thing for Y, except we're going to use sine. A Y over A, or A Y is equal to A sine theta. Amen. And 
If we know ax and ay and we're trying to get a, we have to use the Pythagorean theorem. We have to say ax squared plus ay squared is equal to a squared. That gives us the magnitude. And if I know ax and ay, but I want to figure out the angle, I'm going to use that theta is equal to the inverse tangent of the opposite, which is ay over ax. Okay? Remember this ay, this vector right here, I can put this vector over here. This is still ay on this side. Remember, the vector can move anywhere you want. And this is technically AX up here, too. So you can put those around. It's our parallelogram method, graphical method, all over again. We haven't done anything different. And I guess I skipped a step here. What I really said was tangent of theta is opposite. So this is theta opposite is AY over AX. But if I want to solve it for theta, I have to do the inverse or the arctangent to figure out what that is. Okay. Now, that looks great, but what if I have something like this? I'm going to do vector B going this way, and this angle I'm going to call phi, just so I don't get confused with the other one. Well, in that case, then, I drop a line here. This is BX, vector BX right here, and go this way. This is vector BY this way. Now, you look, here's my angle phi. My 90 degree angle is here, so bx is over here. So if I'm trying to figure out what bx is in this case, it's the opposite angle, so I have to use sine, so this becomes b sine of phi, and by is equal to b cosine of phi. Because right, cosine would be adjacent for this triangle right here. So, what I'm saying is, don't memorize that cosine goes with x and sine goes with y, because in this case, x is sine and y is cosine. You have to look at the individual situation, and you have to draw it out. Don't assume that one is always going to be x and one is always going to be y. I know, that's different than math. In math, you can get away with that because the angle is always measured from the x-axis. But in our case, our angle could be measured from any position, and so you have to look at the individual position to determine which one is x and which one is y. All right, once I have these components, then vector addition changes. Because if I say, oh, I want to take a plus b and figure out what c is. These are all vectors. Well, if I have all the vectors in the x direction and vectors in the y directions, I've already taken the components of it, then I can do it as two separate equations. You do it as two separate equations. So what you do it is in the x direction, this becomes ax plus bx is equal to cx. And in the y direction, this becomes ay plus by equals cy. Now you got to be careful. Notice here, if I'm doing these vectors on my a and b here, what do we know about the sine of vector b? bx, I mean. bx is going to be a negative value. And by is also going to be negative value. These are both going to be positive because this is in the first quadrant, this is in the third quadrant. So you've got to put that in. When you put that in, when you figure out these, you've got to make sure you have the signs right. And you, again, you have to do that by looking at the diagram correctly and figuring out what quadrant they're in. Then you solve this for cx and cy. And then once you have cx and cy, you can figure out c by using the Pythagorean theorem. And you can figure out the angle by using the uh, inverse tangent. One more thing, we also use what we call vector notation. Which is just a separate way of writing, instead of writing x and y subscripts, you use what's called i hat and j hat and k hat. So our vector a would be equal to ax i hat plus ay j hat. These are just numbers. This is a vector. These are just magnitudes. These tell us the directions. So essentially, these are vectors of 
magnitude 1, so when you multiply it doesn't change the value of it, but it tells you the direction. And i hat means x direction, j hat means y direction. And if you had a third dimension, it would be k hat. So you would have ax plus ay plus az k hat if you had a third dimension. All right, so if they ask for vector notation, that's what they mean. They want it in i hat, j hat formula. This is also the same way as writing it as an ordered pair. You could write it as ax, ay. A it goes from the origin to this position. So all these are ways of just delineating a different vector. So any of those are equal to, you just have to look at what the problem does. If the problem gives it to you as I had J hat notation, then they really want the answer to be in the same notation. If they give it to you as a vector and an angle, they want the answer to be as a vector and a magnitude and a direction. So you have to look at what the problem asks for. All right, so I'm going to do a few examples in the next videos to show you how these are done.